Hello there, ladies and gents, and welcome to the show. I'm Mike, and I'm Kat. And today, Kat, we're going to be talking about houses. Awesome! Houses wee, are great. Wee 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 little houses, or tiny houses, tiny as they're known. Houses, as those、hmm. like Barbie size houses. Not doll houses, <laughs> no, and not little houses for hamsters or gerbils or cats or even a little dog house. These are human houses. Oh, okay. But they're really small because、ah. you might have seen in the news that the world is full of people. There's a lot of、yeah. people out there,、That's、and、true. there's more people, but not more world. So we've got to live in smaller houses. That's it. That makes sense to me. Absolutely. Do you live in a tiny house right now, or would you like to live in a tiny house in the future? I would say my house right now is not so tiny. It's、okay. about thirty ping, so、oh. it's pretty good. Well, that's、um, a good size. Yeah, yeah. This is a house or an apartment? An apartment. Ah, yeah, I should say、right. an apartment. It's hard to get a house in Taipei. It is. Houses, of course, are different from apartments because a house will be one building on its own,、mm-hmm. generally with one family or one group of People apartments are just basically one part of a floor in a much taller building. Yeah, yeah. most people in Taiwan live in apartments, but maybe if tiny houses become more popular, some of us will be lucky enough to have our own house. Although it will be small, that's true. So let's see what is all the hype about tiny houses in our article today. Reading. A talk about tiny houses. Good afternoon. As you all know, I've been invited to tell you about my experience living in a tiny house. Hopefully, I can talk you into purchasing one of your own. I began looking into tiny houses after I graduated from college. As a young professional artist, I wasn't making a lot of money and needed something cheap. Under those circumstances, I decided I ought to purchase a tiny house. That way, I didn't have to owe money to the bank. I really feel that it's one of the best choices I've ever made. At the age of 25, I already own my own home. Not many people can say that. But I have to say that the best thing about tiny houses is one simple fact: environmentally friendly living. One solar panel is enough for me to fulfill all my energy needs. And because the house is small, I tend to only buy the household items I need. This saves money and reduces waste. You might wonder if I miss going shopping for clothes, shoes, and other things. In truth, I feel much more free without all that stuff. I have no doubt that if you tried tiny house living, you would feel exactly the same way. Okay, so our article today is actually less of an article and more of a talk. So this person is giving a speech. It's probably in, on a stage in front of an audience. So he says, "Good afternoon. As you all know, I've been invited to tell you about my experience living in a tiny house." Interesting. So this、mm-hmm. person is sharing their experience and knowledge and telling us what it's like. To live in a tiny house. All、yeah. right, sounds interesting. Now the、uh, speech, the speaker continues and says, "Hopefully, I can talk you into purchasing one of your own.、Oh. Oh, maybe they're trying to sell tiny houses too,、Could、or、be. maybe they just think tiny houses are great and people would be happier if they move from apartments and other things like that into tiny houses. But whatever the reason, they're trying to talk us into." Buying or moving or thinking even about living in a tiny house. If you talk somebody into something, it's very similar to that verb to persuade.、Uh-huh. You are using words to try to get them to change their mind. You're using words and good ideas and good arguments, good logic to try to get them to go. You know, you're right about this. I've changed my mind. I will do what you suggest. You've talked me into it, and、oh. here they're trying to talk people into purchasing a tiny house. Yeah, that's right. So purchasing purchase is a verb actually, which just means buy. It just is a fancier way of saying buy. So maybe if you're talking more informally, you'd say, "I want to talk you into buying this tiny house." But if you're talking more formally, you could say, "I want to persuade you to purchase this tiny house." So another, yeah, interesting point here is. 
of one's own. So they want he wants to talk them into buying a house of their own,、oh. and that means that's something that belongs to you. That word "own" is very important here. So a house that I own, or my own house, or house of my own, those are all the same thing. But remember, it's not owned house. It's not like the usual adjective where you. Put an ed on it, and then suddenly becomes an adjective. It's my own house, my house that I am very proud of. So often when we say my own something something, we are proud of that thing we have, or we want to emphasize that it belongs to us and not some other person. I have my own problems. I can't take on the problems of other people too. Or like I use my mom's car right now, but soon I want to get a car of my own. Oh, we could also just kind of flip it around and say, "Soon I want to get my own car. That's a right, a car that belongs to me. I paid for it. No one can take it away." All right. So yes, getting a house of your own would be great. Not only can you use that to sort of grow your money in the future, but you、mm-hmm. don't have to pay rent to someone. Every month, most of us we don't have apartments of our own. Yeah, they're expensive, so they're we have to、expensive. pay someone to live there, and of course that does cost some money. All right, so let's get back to the speech. What does the speaker say next? Okay, well he says I began looking into tiny houses after I graduated from college. Whoa, he's looking into them like when people are inside. He comes、uh, up and looks in the windows. That sounds kind of creepy. That's but weird. That's Call not, the police. That's not what. He He means actually,、oh. it's totally different.、Oh, so look into here is a figure of speech. That means you search for information about something. Oh, yeah. You're finding out more about it. That's right. So、okay. you're doing you're doing some research. You're really kind of thinking about it. You want to learn more about it or investigate what it's all about. So an example of this might be: I'm looking into taking some art classes and figuring out which will be the best for me. So maybe you're looking at the different art classes at university. Cities or art schools, and seeing like how much do they cost? What do they teach me? How long are they? When do they happen? That's looking into them. That's right. We'll look into things when they're important or a really big decision, or will cost a lot of money. Of course, you which tiny look, houses do. That's right. Look into which college to go to. Look into where you want to go for your big holiday this year. You wouldn't say, "I'm looking into buying a bottle of water this afternoon." <laughs> no, you're not going to call your bank. Anchor and your friends and your lawyer and your mom and dad. Should I buy a bottle of water? What kind of water should I buy? Where should I buy the water? Or、no. maybe it's maybe you're out of money and a bottle of water is really all you can afford. <laughs> maybe that's the case. But of course, generally when we're looking into things, it's because it's a big deal. It's important, and we need to collect a lot of good information before. We decide. So this guy's looking into buying a house, or telling people that he started to look into it when he finished school. And here's why: it says, as a young professional artist, I wasn't making a lot of money and needed something cheap. Yes,、mm-hmm. absolutely. That's very, very true. Young artists don't make a lot of money. Old、right. artists often don't make a lot of money. Right. Dead artists make a lot of money. That's true. You know, Dead that, artists are usually the most famous. I think、artists. Van Gogh only sold one painting when he was alive,、yep. but now his paintings are worth millions. So artists, like many other people, right out of school, they are worried about money. They want to save as much as possible. All right. Now let's have a look at our next word: professional. So the speaker had mentioned that he is a young professional artist and wasn't making a lot of money. Now, professional. This adjective we're using it as an adjective here. Basically, just means you're doing something as a job. That is your job. Profession is another word for job. All right. We can use it as a noun and say, yeah, he's a professional. He does this for his job. He makes money doing this. Or we can use it in front of the job. Or in front of the activity, a lot of people might be musicians. They just like to play guitar with their friends on the weekend. But if you're a professional musician, that's your job. That's how you make the money that you use to live. So you might play for popular、uh, singers. You might play in a wedding band. Who knows? But that is how you make your money. You're a professional. Uh, musician. Now, of course, we don't really use it for certain jobs. Like you wouldn't say, "I'm a professional doctor," because people aren't doctors on the weekend just for fun. But there are things like being an artist, a musician, an athlete. 
professional athletes make money playing sports. They don't just do it for fun. For example, Gary isn't a professional singer. He does it just for fun. All right, so that's enough about professionals. So this guy is saying he's a professional artist. He needed to save money. He wanted something cheap. Under those circumstances, I decided I ought to purchase a tiny house, he says. So under the circumstances is another phrase that we see here, which means in that situation, considering all the things are happening around me. Like he needed to save money. He was kind of poor, like we said, you know, only dead artists make a lot of money usually. Um, you probably need some space to do art, or maybe some outdoor space. You need a place that's cheap and then you don't want to keep paying for. So under those circumstances, in that situation, he was looking for something cheap. And another thing we see is the phrasal verb ought to. Ought to is just another way of saying should. Like you feel like it's the right decision or it's the right thing to do, so you ought to look into getting a tiny house for yourself. And another example sentence for this, doctors say we ought to eat more fruit and vegetables than meat or bread. Yeah, so we should eat more fruit and veggies, eat less meat and bread. Yeah, that's what we ought to do. That's all what right. we ought to do. Do now, we always though, do it? That's right, not yeah. always. Now though, we ought to get back to the article. Mm. All right, going back to this idea of it's, be, it's a good idea to think of a tiny house when you're younger and maybe don't have so much money, the artist goes on to say that way, by buying a small house or a tiny house, that way I didn't have to owe money to the bank. So here's another great thing about tiny houses. Since they don't cost a lot of money, you don't have to borrow a lot of money from the bank to buy one. Well, mm -hmm. you'll borrow a lot less than if you're buying a big house or an expensive apartment. You won't owe that bank so much money and to oh well this is a verb and basically if you borrow something from someone then you have to pay it back then you owe them all right so that's all we're doing we're not buying it from someone we're not taking it from someone they're lending it to us or there we are borrowing it from them and you'll use that money you'll spend that money and then later on though you have to give it back you have to pay it back so everything is back to even and fair. So that mm -hmm. situation where you've borrowed money and you still have to pay it back, you owe, O-W-E, that person. For example, the company will go bankrupt at the end of this year if it still can't pay the $50 million it owes the bank. Ooh, oh. it borrowed a lot of money from the bank a while ago, it has to pay it back or big trouble. It's not good to owe people money in general. No, I don't think so. I don't like owing mm. people money. If you borrow it, try to pay it back as fast as possible. Yeah, you got to make sure that you can only borrow what you can afford to pay back. Right. Mm. So the guy goes on to say, I really feel that it's one of the best choices I've ever made. Sounds oh. happy. So sounds like it was worth it to buy that tiny house. There you go. And well, he goes on to say, at the age of 25, quite young, at the age of 25, I already own my own home. Not many people can say that. It's true. Yeah. A lot of people might be thinking of buying a house in their 30s, but 25, just a year or two out of university, that's pretty young to own your house, but it's, a, it's possible since the houses are small and they don't cost so much money. And there are some other benefits to tiny houses too, right? Yeah, absolutely. The artist says, but I have to say that the best thing about tiny houses is one simple fact environmentally friendly living. I was going to say they're much easier to clean. That's true. Okay, so we talk about this concept of environmentally friendly, that, like we said, it's easy to clean, but it also means that it's good for the environment. Something that is good for the earth is environmentally friendly. This phrase, friendly, something something friendly, means that that thing is good for something or welcoming to it. So a place that is pet friendly, like a pet friendly cafe, means they will welcome you to bring your pet inside. Some place that is child friendly, maybe it's good for children to hang out there or, you know, they like, they'll enjoy doing that sort of thing. 
or something that's like foreigner friendly. Like I am a foreigner and maybe there are some places where people only speak Chinese, so I'm not quite as comfortable. But if there's some place which has a lot of English support and that sort of thing, then it might feel a little more welcoming to somebody like me. So that would be foreigner friendly. So environmentally friendly is friendly to the earth. All right, so here's another example for you. Bicycling is an environmentally friendly way to get around. That's right, because you don't use gas, you don't use any oil, and it's very good for the earth. Okay, yep. So we're starting to see that tiny houses help you save lots of different things. You save money because they're cheaper, you save time because they're smaller and easier to clean, and of course you'll also save money and power because it doesn't take so much to cool them down in the summertime or warm them up in the wintertime. That's right. As the speaker says, one solar panel, just one solar panel, is enough for me to fulfill all my energy needs. So That's all the electricity amazing. for cooking and lighting, all of the heat to warm up the water and all that kind of stuff. Just one solar panel, probably up there on the roof of the tiny house, is enough for all of that. And of course, once you put the solar panel there, once you pay for that, all of your power is free. Well, as long as the sun is working. Yeah, I mean, is, you know, if the sun's not working, I think you have bigger problems than not getting free power. The house will fall down before the sun breaks. That's right. I think that's probably safe to say. Yes, solar power is something a lot of you probably have heard about and know about. It's in the news all the time these days. Mm -hmm. Solar is an adjective that just means anything that comes from the sun. All right, so we're talking power or energy that comes from the sun. These panels that look sort of like black mirrors, they collect up the heat from the sun and turn that into electricity, which we can use to power machines and all sorts of other stuff. As the example sentence says, solar energy is a cleaner way of making power. The sun's always there and it doesn't produce pollution. When we talk about a panel, well, a panel can be lots of things, but generally it's just a wide, flat piece of something. A panel of wood would be a wide, flat piece of wood you might put on a wall or used to make furniture or something out of. We can also talk about panels being used um, to make power, like a solar panel. They're not round or square or triangular, they're flat and wide, and that's why they can collect a lot of sunlight to make power. So that's why we call them solar panels. All shapes and sizes, but their job is to turn sunlight and heat into electricity. Yeah, and they're pretty great they at what they do. Well. Yeah, they, in fact, they're so good at what they do that they can fulfill all the energy needs of a tiny house. Great. So fulfill is this verb that means to be enough for something or somebody or provide something that they need. So fulfill your energy needs that means that the sun gives you enough energy that you don't need any more after that. Or if you're fulfilling a duty, maybe you have something that you are obligated to do, that's something that you have to do, and if you fulfill that, then you've done what you have to do. If you fulfill a requirement, that means that you're basically following a rule that you need to achieve before you can do something. So also fulfill can mean that you achieve something that you wanted to happen or fulfill your desire for a happy life. If you feel fulfilled, it means you are happy and you have everything that you could want. Or if you fulfill a dream, that means that you had a dream that came true for you. Another example sentence, this new park really fulfills a need for the community where many young couples and their children live. All right, back to our article. The speaker continues by saying, and here's another good thing about tiny houses. I hope you're taking notes. And because the house is small, I tend to only buy the household items I need. Okay, so this is a good thing, but if you're the kind of person who likes to have lots of stuff around you, a tiny household might not work. You can't have 5,000 books in your personal library. That 72-inch TV uh -huh. probably won't fit in your tiny house. And if you think you're going to have eight friends come over and sleep there, yeah, they won't be doing that because they're quite small. But the good thing is it tends to help you control what you buy. You have to think very carefully about what you buy because you don't have all the extra space. 
All right, if you tend to do something, this is what you usually do. In your normal life, in the normal course of events, this is what you will do. All right, sometimes things will change and you'll have to do things a little differently, but if everything is kind of normal and usual, when you tend to do something, this is what you usually do. And so he said he tends to only buy the household items he needs. What are household items? Household items are, th well, household things in general, mm -hmm. are things you use just in your home or they're related to your home, or they're related to your house. They, you hold them in your house, so they are household. Yeah. All right, so that basically means not a lot of extra stuff, simple equipment for the kitchen, not a big TV or lots of stereo or entertainment stuff, you know, right. things like that. Maybe even you have to go out and wash your clothes in another place because you might not have space for a washing machine and things like that. So, That's you know, you will have to trade off a few things, but that can save you in other ways too, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the artist says, this saves money and reduces waste. So go. he doesn't throw away as much mm -hmm. thing. He doesn't have to spend as much money. Yeah. and. But what about all the stuff that he could have? Well, that's, as we said, it's a trade-off. You have to give up some things to get some things. You're getting a nice cheap home, but you're giving up some of those things you might like to have. So it says, you might wonder if I miss going shopping for clothes, shoes, and other things. He probably has like one good winter jacket, two pairs of shoes, you know, not a lot of stuff. So you might think that they miss doing that. They miss shopping. They miss having those things at home. Yeah, you might think so, mm -hmm. but actually the person says, in truth, I feel much more free without all that stuff. Great. Yeah, so in truth here means the same thing as like, really, actually, the truth is, this is the thing which is actually true, even though you might not expect it to be true, because living without a lot of stuff, for some people, is really tough. Mm -hmm. It could be, and I guess if you're used to it, it would take you some time to get uh, used to the tiny house, but we can all change. Yeah. And then we wrap it up with this sentence, I have no doubt that if you tried tiny house living, you would feel exactly the same way. It mm. might take you a little time to get used to it, but yeah, you might feel like, I feel so free and light because I don't have all this other junk around me that I gotta take care of or fix or throw away or do stuff. So eventually, if you tried it, you might find you love it. Very yeah. interesting. Very right. true, yeah. So that's actually gonna be the topic of our For You chat today. So we're gonna go right to that. Okay, so here we have our For You chat question for today, which is, do you think you have too much stuff? And what could you cut back on to make your life simpler, if the answer is yes? I don't think I have too much stuff, but my wife might disagree. But I would say that the stuff I have too much of it's small and easy to kind of put away. Ah. I have a few thousand books, but they fit against a wall. A few thousand? I have a few thousand CDs, but they fit in a nice cabinet. I have a few hundred records, but they fit in a lovely place under my record player. I don't have a lot of big stuff. My wife has a room full of clothes and you can't even go in there. That's too much stuff. Hmm, plus, well, it's, plus it's her stuff, not my stuff. Exactly. <laughs> when it's your stuff, it's a lot it's, harder to it's say. It's wonderful. You can't throw it away. But if it's your stuff, God, get it out of here. Exactly. But yeah, I could probably, some people said I should get a, an e-book, you know, a tablet and mm. read books on there. But I like paper books. They're more enjoyable. That's true. Paper so. is fun to fun to touch. You know, it's mm. got a it's got something about it that an ebook doesn't I have. I think we all could probably say, yeah, we have a bit too much stuff. But hey, if that stuff makes you happy, if it brings joy in your life, and it's not causing too many problems, right? I would say take care of it. But sure, making your life simpler could be good. I think we could all do that. Yeah, so maybe you think that there's something you could do to make your life simpler or your family's life simpler. Mm -hmm. So what could those things be? Talk with your classmates, talk with your friends, and we're gonna see you back here for day two of our tiny house article. I'm Kat. And I'm Mike. We'll see ya. If I move into a giant house, my life will be simpler. A talk about tiny houses. Good afternoon. 
As you all know, I've been invited to tell you about my experience living in a tiny house. Hopefully, I can talk you into purchasing one of your own. I began looking into tiny houses after I graduated from college. As a young, professional artist, I wasn't making a lot of money and needed something cheap. Under those circumstances, I decided I ought to purchase a tiny house. That way, I didn't have to owe money to the bank. I really feel that it's one of the best choices I've ever made. At the age of 25, I already own my own home. Not many people can say that. But I have to say that the best thing about tiny houses is one simple fact, environmentally friendly living. One solar panel is enough for me to fulfill all my energy needs. And because the house is small, I tend to only buy the household items I need. This saves money and reduces waste. You might wonder if I miss going shopping for clothes, shoes, and other things. In truth, I feel much more free without all that stuff. I have no doubt that if you tried tiny house living, you would feel exactly the same way. Vocabulary Review Ought to You ought to save a little bit of money every month, so you'll have some to use if you need it. Oh, Tim is avoiding Jenny right now because he owes her money. She lent him $1,000 last week. Environmentally friendly. The company is getting rid of plastic packaging so that its products are more environmentally friendly. Solar. That shop gets most of its electricity from solar power. Fulfill. That ride was closed down after it was found that it didn't fulfill the theme park's safety requirements. Household. At the age of 30, Steve started a company that makes cleaning tools for household use. Triple W dot English 4U.net